Minasan, Kumawa, everyone, good evening. Thank you for coming to our Washington program, The World of No, featuring performances by Takeda Munenori-san. Thanks to the co-sponsors of tonight's program. I'd like to thank especially the Consulate General of Japan in Seattle and the Japan Business Association of Seattle for supporting Washington's presentations of programs such as tonight's. Founded in 2018, Washington has two missions, to hold public programs for increasing the awareness and understanding of classical Japanese at the University of Washington, and to raise funds for supporting classical Japanese studies at the University of Washington. When written in kanji, Washington reads as wa, referring to Japan as in wa shoku, Japanese food, and wa gyu, Japanese beef, shin, meaning spirit, kai, and uh, uh, meaning a society or a so association, thus Japanese spirit association. While this may sound Japanese nationalistic in English, I should point out that all of Washington refers to our Washington state as well. So far, your donations have enabled Washington to award two full uh, year graduate fellowships, and we hope to continue to do so. Almost all of the money we raise throughout the year goes to support graduate students in classical Japanese studies, and the rest is devoted to holding public events such as this one. Please visit washinkai.info to learn more about what we do and how you may donate to Washinkai. My name is Steven Sumida. I am a UW professor emeritus of American ethnic studies and have been a member of Washinkai from the start. I feel personally privileged to serve as a moderator for the world of no because I had a second cousin in Japan who for 50 years was one of my best friends, though we lived an ocean apart and spoke in different languages with each other, his English being better than my Japanese, however. No was his hobby through all of his adult life, beginning with his devotion to his no drama club at the Doshisha University in Kyoto, and ending with his final performance in November of 2016. His practice of no was what's called yokyoku, the performance of all parts of no texts. My cousin Nabara Kazuto settled with his own family in Chibaken. He passed away in February of 2017. After his funeral, his widow Setsue gave me Kazuto's ko tsuzumi, and though I declined taking such a treasured memento, she insisted. And here it is. He would be laughing now. I can't really make a sound with it. Professor Paul Atkins will, will be introducing tonight's performing artist of no, Takeda Munenori-san. Professor Atkins is professor of Japanese in the Department of Asian Languages and Literatures at the University of Washington in Seattle. He teaches classical Japanese language and literature and writes about literature, drama, and culture of medieval Japan that is around 1150 to 1600. His knowledge of no is the basis of one of his books among his many publications, Revealed Identity the No Plays of Komparu Zenchiku. Professor Atkins was educated at Stanford University and at the University of Tokyo, where he was a graduate research student. His current project is a translation of poems in Chinese by the medieval Japanese Zen abbot, Zekkai Chushin. After the performances by Takeda-san, Professor Atkins will be the interpreter in a question and answer part of tonight's program. Please keep in mind that the Q&A function of this Zoom setup is working while the chat box is turned off. 
you're welcome to ask questions that I'll try to relay to Professor Atkins and Takeda-san. Here is Professor Paul Atkins. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sumida, for that uh, kind introduction. I'm here at the Language Learning Center in Denny Hall on the UW campus with some uh, volunteers from Washinkai. I'm very uh, happy to be here. I want to uh, thank you for coming. As you heard, my name is Paul Atkins. I've been teaching and writing about classical Japanese language, literature, and culture, uh, including no drama, at the University of Washington for the past 20 years or so. It's a great pleasure to be with you tonight. Before I begin my, my remarks, I'd like to thank the members and supporters of Washinkai, the Friends of Classical Japanese at UW, for making tonight's presentation possible. Our honorary member, the Honorable Yoichiro Yamada, past Consul General of Japan in Seattle from 2017 to 2020. Our Washinkai committee, Janet Heinick, Yuko Kikuchi, Kotoku Kurachi, Hiroshi Matsubara, Yoshi Minegishi, Noriko Palmer, Eugene Saburi, Stephen Sumida, Te Yoshitani, and especially our steering subcommittee, Yumi Iwasaki, Naomi Minegishi, Niki Nakamitsu, and Leslie Yamada, whose uh, volunteer efforts really keep our activities going. I'd also like to thank our fabulous staff members at UW, including Anna Schnell of the Department of Asian Languages and Literature, and Russ Hugo of the Language Learning Center, who is here with us tonight. What is no? Well, if you went to my lecture that I gave a couple of weeks ago by the same title, and you paid attention, you probably already have a very good idea of what no is. If not, I recommend that you watch it after the program. It's online at the Washington website, washington.info. And if you click on events, you go down to it. In a nutshell, no is a masked dance drama accompanied by vocal and instrumental music. I'll say that again, a masked dance drama accompanied by vocal and instrumental music. So if you can imagine a Western play and you combine it with opera and ballet and you put masks on the main characters, that's a little bit like a no play. It's obviously uh, not that simple. No has its own distinctive ways of expression, of singing, dancing, playing music, writing, and wardrobe. Even if you, they took all the costumes and the masks off, even if they just walked across the room, you would know that's a no actor. Or if you heard them singing somewhere, you would say that's no singing, even if you didn't recognize the specific play. Uh, just the way they walk is uh, really, uh, they walk in this quiet and dignified way, but you, you can spot it anywhere. You'll see what I mean in a few minutes, you'll figure it out. No is the oldest continuously performed theatrical genre in the world. It dates from the middle of the 14th century and possibly earlier. Ancient Greek drama is older, but that performance, that tradition was interrupted. Shakespeare, it's true, has been performed from his day to the present, but no has a head start of about 250 years on Shakespeare. It's been performed for the last 650 years or so. Due to the efforts of writers and translators in the early 20th century, people like Ernest Fenollosa, Ezra Pound, Arthur Whaley, uh, William Butler Yeats, uh, the dramatist, uh, the German dramatist Bertolt Brecht, uh, no captured the interest and the attention of the West, and it's now acknowledged as a major genre in world drama. So if you'd like more details, please watch my lecture later. It's online. Now I'd like to say a few words about the star of the, this evening's program, Mr. Takeda Munenori, who is going to be joining us live from Tokyo. Many of you already know of him, uh, having seen his previous performances in the Pacific Northwest. He performed at ACT Theater in Seattle in 2014, and he gave uh, demonstrations that were um, uh, very successful on uh, Bainbridge Island, Poles Bowl, Seattle, Vancouver, BC, and Bellevue in 2013. Uh, and he now has uh, many fans in the region. Mr. Takeda was born in Tokyo in 1978 into the Takeda family of no actors who are affiliated with the Kansei School. He made his stage debut in 1980 at the age of uh, two years and 11 months. And he played his first leading role as Shte in 1988 at the age of 10. 
After he graduated from Waseda University with a major in theater, he performed Dojoji uh, for the first time in 2012. And it's a kind of graduation thesis for no actors due to its technical difficulty. He appears on the no stage in various capacities about 100 times a year, and he plays the lead role in about five plays annually. Besides performing in Japan, Mr. Takeda has conducted numerous workshops overseas besides uh, uh, the USA, Canada, China, Russia, Italy, France, and the UK. He is a brilliant and exciting actor. And although he's already a veteran of the stage, uh, no actors uh, at 40 years or so are really, in a sense, just getting started. And I look forward to watching him uh, flourish for the next few decades. Now I would like to uh, give you some background on the first excerpt that uh, Mr. Takeda and friends have performed with us in Tokyo. I've got some slides here. Uh, the play is a Benke Award for Nabenke, and I've got some slides that we'll just cycle through with the Japanese text and the English translation that are gonna be performed. I don't quite have the time to read them out for you, so you're gonna have to puzzle through them yourself. Uh, I do want to note that we've got these uh, two wonderful clips. Mr. Takeda is definitely live with us in Tokyo, but we asked him, Washinkai asked him to pre-record just the performance parts with his ensemble. There are multiple people doing it, and we wanted to make sure, or at least reduce the chances that something might go haywire uh, with the technology. But I want to tell you that these excerpts were performed especially for tonight's performance. Uh, he chose the plays in consultation with us. He indulged our request. We asked for uh, plays that were set in the autumn since uh, it is the season. And we all know how important seasonality is in traditional Japanese culture. And these clips that you're about to see have never been shown publicly before. We might go through uh, the next slide or move to the English part. Uh, the first excerpt you're going to be watching, it's about 10 minutes long. It's from a play called Benke Aboard or Funa Benke in Japanese. I summarized it in my previous talk and I showed you a different scene from the same play. This play is set in the late 12th century in the aftermath of the civil war between the Minamoto and the Taira that is immortalized in the epic tale of the Heike, Heike Monogatari. That war ended with the annihilation of the Taira in a naval battle at Dano Ura off the coast of the modern city of Shimonoseki in 1185. Minamoto no Yoshitsune, who was a brilliant general, and he had delivered so many victories to the Minamoto during the war, including the coup de grace at Dannaura. After the war, he was falsely accused of disloyalty to his half-brother Yoritomo, who was leader of the Minamoto. At this point in the play, in the time of the play, our hero is now a fugitive. He's on the run, with Benke, who's this very imposing, not just a monk, but also a warrior who serves as his bodyguard. And they also have with them uh, Lady Shizuka, who's a famous dancer, and she's Yoshitsune's lover. And this is Japan's most wanted, or if you prefer, Bonnie and Clyde with Clyde's gang. Uh, Benke tells Yoshitsune that he needs to send Shizuka back to the capital where well, we're gonna be safe. Things are gonna get ugly very quickly. And Yoshitsune does, and he knows that it's the last time that they're ever going to meet in this lifetime. And that was the scene that I showed you in my lecture, the parting in her dance. In the second act, after they send Shizuka away, they get on their boat and they head west to the Western country uh, on the run. And they are all of a sudden pursued and attacked by the ghost of Taira no Mono, Tomomori. Tomomori is one of the many, many people that Yoshitsune vanquished during his military career. And he has carried this grudge against Yoshitsune uh, into the afterlife. Uh, Yoshitsune, thanks to Yoshitsune, he drowned at Dan Ura. He's gonna drown Yoshitsune in return. He's gonna avenge his own death. Uh, at that point, uh, Benke, the monk, uh, steps in. Yoshitsune tries to fight him off with a sword. Benke says he's a ghost, that's not gonna work. And Benke, fortunately for him, us, or for the party, he's a monk and he pulls out his prayer beads and he rubs them together and he manages to repel Tomomori with prayers and chanting. And it's at that point that the play ends. So the excerpt that we're going to see is from this last scene. And Mr. Takeda is playing Tomomori. 
Uh, he comes out with this halberd. It's basically a sword on a stick. And he threatens and menaces uh, Yoshitsune and Benke. Uh, he performed this um, excerpt with a very small ensemble. And for example, instead of eight people in the chorus, he's got three. He's got the full orchestra, but a reduced chorus. And during this scene, Benke and Yoshitsune are um, uh, not portrayed in, in this performance. In a full performance, they'd be on stage. But you'd have to imagine them off to your right, uh, fending off uh, Tomomori. And they, they do fend him off, and then they get in the boat, and they just, as you see from the text, get away as soon as they can and make their escape. And so uh, the clip is about 10 minutes long. Uh, you see the uh, libretto. Uh, up there, that was uh, from a 1930s libretto and the wonderful translation by Royal Tyler. Uh, so here it is. This is uh, Takeda Munenori, uh, starring in the second act of Benke Aboard or Funa Benke. Enjoy. <laughs> Pretty good. I think No has a reputation for being rather slow and slow paced. And uh, in fact, sometimes you see people nodding off in the theater, but I don't think anybody nodded off during that one. That play is uh, by Kan Kanze Kojiro Nobumitsu. He's famous for a kind of fantastic spectacle. Pardon me, spectacle No. And uh, uh, it's a little bit, it's No has got a tremendous amount of diversity in it. Our next play is perhaps what people think about when they uh, think about no and what they heard about it. It's a, it's a slower play. It's not the slowest kind of play, um, but it is more lyrical. Uh, it's a play, an excerpt from a play called uh, Lady Han, or in Japanese, Hanjo. And the excerpt is much longer. It's about 20 minutes. So you're really going to need to get yourself into the mood of no 
and immerse yourself and forget about the clock, forget about the time and to try to lose yourself in this world. That's part of what it is. Uh, first of all, let me tell you about the plot of the entire play. One summer, a courtier by the name of Yoshida is traveling from the capital, which is in Kyoto, uh, to the Eastern country. And he stops at a town called Nogami, located in what is now called a uh, Gifu prefecture. And he stops at a house of pleasure. And the woman who entertains him is named Hanago. And somehow the two of them uh, fall in love. Just before he leaves uh, Hanago in the town of Nogami, they exchange uh, folding fans. It's the summertime. And they trade fans as a token of their affection. And he promises her that he's going to come back and stop in on his way back from the capital. Uh, after that happens, Hanago is no longer interested in the other customers, and eventually the madam throws her out. This is how the play begins. And she is out on the road, and she decides she's going to go. She's very upset, and she's going to go to Kyoto and find Yoshida. And uh, she stops at the Shimogamo Shrine. And uh, at that time, Yoshida is done with his business, and he stops actually at uh, Nogami to see her. He's told that she's gone. And then he goes to the same shrine and eventually they reunite. But before that, we're in the play, uh, Hanago uh, thinks that Yoshida has abandoned her completely and he's never coming back. And the season is changing, the weather is getting cooler and she feels like a folding fan in autumn that has been discarded. She's outlived her usefulness to him and he's thrown her away like a fan in autumn. This is a very important motif and image in the play. So uh, it's this scene that Mr. Takeda is going to uh, prevent, present for us. It's Hanago's dance of sadness and regret. She's yearning for Yoshida, and at the same time, she resents him for she thinks that she's abandoning him. Um, at the end of the play, as I said, against all odds, he fulfills his pledge to her, and he returns for Hanago. If you've seen that movie, An Officer and the Gentleman, and then part at the end where Richard Gere comes back and he picks up Deborah Winger, and he takes her out of the factory. It's kind of like that. Um, but the scene that we're watching is before that. There's some dramatic irony. We know something that she doesn't, because the nose plays are not really about surprises in the plot. Uh, she is unaware that her doubt and her despair are unfounded. It's just completely immersed in her um, uh, uh, sadness and uh, this uh, uh, mistaken idea. So you have the motif of the fan, and her feelings. This is in part based on a story from uh, ancient Chinese literature and uh, the emperor uh, abandoning one concubine for another. That's also projected onto the world of the play. Uh, anyway, this is about a, a little bit more than 20 minutes of uh, Takeda Munenori playing the starring role as Lady Han in the play Hanjo. Enjoy. <laughs>
was that? That was beautiful. It was pretty good, wasn't it? Well, you've heard a lot about him, and now you see him. The man behind the mask is here, our star, Takeda Munenori, live from Tokyo, where it's uh, morning on, what day is it? Thursday morning? Oh, how was that? Hello, everyone. I'm Munenori Takeda. I'm going to be uh, doing some consecutive interpretation. I have to warn everybody, I'm not a professional consecutive interpreter of uh, Japanese. I might make some mistakes. If you notice my mistakes, the interpretation is not for you. It's for somebody else. Uh, but I'll do my best. Uh, uh, Munenori Sensei has some things he'd like to show us. We're going to do that for about 15 minutes. And then we'll switch to Q&A. People can put their uh, Q&A if you have questions. You can put them in there now, and we'll try to get them a, a little bit later. So, じゃあ、先生、一言お願いします。どうぞ。はい。え、私は今日本からえ、シアトル、え、アメリカの皆様にえ、お届けしていますけれども、え、これから脳で使うえ、とても大事な要素である3つのものをえ、皆様にお見せ
So uh, as you saw, we saw the God, uh, but now we'd also like to see the enemy of the gods, uh, the, uh, a demon-type figure that, that sometimes appears in no place. さあその最も代表的な能面ご覧いただきたいと思いますけれどもこれはハンニャという名称がついています。This is one of the most representative no masks and it's called Hanya, Pranya or in、uh, Sanskrit for wisdom. えー、いかにも、まあ、モンスターのような怖い顔をしていますけれども、えー、脳でこの使うハンニャという能面は決して怪物やモンスターではありません。It looks very frightening, but in no Uh, it's not a demon, it's not a monster. 実はもともとは女性なんですね。人間の女性が嫉妬に、まあ、気が狂いますと、こういうふうに角が生えてきて、えーまあ、モンスターのようになってしまうということを実は表現している能面なんです。This no is an expression of a woman, a human, a female human, who through jealousy has lost her mind and has become monstrous. とても怖い顔をしていますけれども、この能面がちょっと角度を変えることで、えー、実は表情が非常に動くんですね。それをちょっとこれからご覧いただきたいと思います。It looks very frightening, but if you change the angle just slightly, the expression also changes. I'd like to show that to you. まずこの能面が少し下の方を向きますと、少し。悲しいような苦しいようなそういう表情に見えます。これがぐっと上を向きますと強さとか怖さが強調されます。これは実は種がありまして、この能面の下半分は怒りの顔なんですね。でも上半分は悲しみの顔をしています。But the top half expresses sadness. なので上半分が強調されると悲しみになり、下半分が強調されると怒りになります。So if you emphasize the top half, it looks sad. If you emphasize the bottom half, it seems angry. と言っても、えー、女性の能面こんな怖いものばかりではありません。もっと優しい顔のものが、えー、圧倒的に多いんです。It's not the case that all of the female masks are like this. We have some very, very lovely female masks, and that is the great majority. じゃ今度はもう少し可愛らしい能面。こちら、コウモテと言います。Here is a cuter, much cuter mask. It's called コウモテ or small face. スモールフェイスというふうに、まあ、実際には表記するんですけれどもこの小さいというのには可愛らしいとか若いという意味があります。この能面見ていただきますと髪の毛のところがすごくこう、まあえー、ときれいにこう整っているのがよくわかりますかね。If you look at the side, you can see how、uh, nicely the hair is arranged. これが若さとか美しさの象徴なんです。This is a symbol of beauty and youth. 実はさっきのハンニャの能面ですね。これを見ていただきますと、髪の毛のところを見てください。すごく乱れてますよね。Look at the hair on this Hanya mask we saw a second ago and see how disordered the hair is. これは心が乱れているから、このヘアスタイルも乱れているという考え方なんです。It's thought that、uh, this disorder of the hair represents mental and spiritual disorder.、えー、いい We've seen some representative female masks. I'd like to show you one more. これは男性の能面なんですけれども、皆様が今、えー、映像でご覧いただいた船弁慶で平の友盛の幽霊が使う、えー、能面、三日月という名称です。This is a mask called Mikazuki. It's a male mask and it's used in roles such as the one you just saw of Tomomori in the second act of Benkei of War. これは幽霊の、男性の幽霊の役をするときに使う専用の能面なんですけれども、少し近づいていきますと、目のところが黄色になっているのがわかりますでしょうか目の白目のところが黄色になっています
it's used to uh, uh, play roles uh, in which uh, there's a, a, a ghost or an angry spirit. And if you look very closely at the eyeballs, uh, you can see that they're a yellow. この目が金色になっているものはこの世のものではないつまり生きている人間ではないということの象徴になっています the, uh, not, uh, human, super, super 能面は、えー、大体全部200種類ぐらい実は細かく分けると、えー、種類があるんですけれども今日はその一部をご覧いただきました。They are saying there are about 200 different types of no masks, but I've just、uh, been able to show you three today. さあ続いて今度は脳装束をご覧いただこうと思います。Now let's take a look at、uh, customs. まず最初にご覧いただくのは、今皆様がご覧いただいた、繁盛で、えー、指定がつけておりました、えー、カラオリという装束の中でも一番豪華な装束をご覧いただきたいと思います。The first one I'd like to show you is、uh, the most elaborate and gorgeous costume used. It's called Kara Ori, and it was,、uh, it's worn in the play Hanjo, which I just performed for you. Uh, I'd like to get, like you get a really close look at it, and you see that it's、uh, got white and、uh, a, a vermilion color, and that represents the、uh, starring role. So, the Haru no Ksabana, Aki no Ksabana, a doji ni ga kare te te, Akai no ga hai te iru mono wa, Wakai jose o sur to, Wakai jose no yako sur to ki no, sen yo no shouzok to yoko ni naimas. It has flowers from both、uh, spring and autumn. And the part with the cloth that has red、uh, coloring in it, red fabric, is used only in roles in which the woman is young. もっとさらに近づけますと、よいしょ。はい。あの、この図柄が、えー、描かれているのではなくて、立体的にこの、えー、折られているのがわかりますでしょうか If you look really close, I hope you can see that the design is not painted on, it's woven into the fabric. これが、えー、日本の、まあ、古来から続く、えー、装束を作る技術の結晶なんですね。This is a crystallization of the ancient art of weaving in Japan. はい、ありがとうございます。じゃもう一つ脳装束をご覧いただきたいと思います。Let's take a look at another one.、えー、次は、長剣という脳装束です。The next one is called a 長剣。先ほどのものより生地が少し薄いと思います。Compared to the other one, the fabric is thinner. これは、えー、花の妖精の役ですとか、あるいは、えー、貴族の女性の役をするときなどに、えー、上着として用いられる非常にこの軽くできた素材の、えー、脳装束になります。It's a very light fabric. It's used as an outer coat in roles,、uh, for example, as a, for an aristocratic woman. Or for people who are going to view the flowers. I think you can see the design is the flowers in the basket, it's the, the basket of flowers motif. そしてもう一つ、この絵図柄ですね、これちょっとなかなか分かりにくいと思うんですけれども、芝生の上に小さな水滴がついている、露芝という模様で、日本で古来からある文様の一つになります。And then this、uh, next motif is a little bit hard to figure out, but it's an old motif, it's grass with dewdrops on top of it. ありがとうございます。脳装束も非常に数が多いんですけれども、今日はその一部をご覧いただいています。There are also many, many different types of costumes, but、uh, I'll just leave it at those two for today. さあ次に、えー、ノーデスカを扇を最後にご覧いただきたいと思います。Finally, I'd like you to take a look at a fan. 一般的にあの扇っていうとこういうふうにこう閉じると全部中が隠れてしまう扇を使うことが多いんですけれども、ノーの扇はこれ閉じた状態なんですけども中がちょっと見える扇になっています。
no fans are distinctive in that when you close them, they're still spread out a little bit compared to ordinary fans, which are completely closed up when you shut them. このちょっと中が見える状態の扇を中継と私たちは呼んでいます。We call this type of fan chuken, where you can kind of see inside the fan even when it's closed. で、これは開きますと、中の図柄が、はい。たくさんの女性が描かれていますね。When you open it up, you can see the, there's a design of a group of women, women standing there. これは貴族の女性ですとか、高貴な身分の女性の役をするときに用いる、えー、扇で、カズラ扇と言います。This is a fan that's used in playing roles of high-born ladies. That's called a カズラ扇。裏はまた図柄が違っていて、これは花の乗った車、花車が描かれています。There's a different design on the back, and this is a carriage loaded with flowers. It's called the flower carriage. さあ今度もう一つ奥義をご覧いただきますが、今度の奥義は、はい、これは松に日の出という、えー、図柄になります。This is、uh, another fan I'd like to show you. It's got a pine tree and the rising sun. これは、えー、勝ち戦の、えー、お侍さんを描いた勝ち修羅物というときに、えー、用いられる奥義になります。This is used for playing roles of victorious warriors. 松は、えー、非常にこの樹齢の長い、えー、木で、そしてずっと緑が青々として茂っていることで、神様が宿る木として崇められている。そんな松に日の出、えー、どちらもめでたいモチーフで、えー、その価値を表現しているわけなんです。The pine is well known for its long life and its colors never change. It's、uh, quite auspicious. And of the sunrise is obviously auspicious. The two of them are a great combination. A Ogi to you know, a Jibunga Koyako Yatirio to you put all Maravas, Motomo Tantikini Aravas, a Motomono no Hitos de, a Korenio de Yakuno personality got him out of it to bring up the mass. The、uh, fan is one of the、uh, signs or symbols of the role that's being played, and it gives the audience a hint as to the identity of the person who's、uh, holding it. Hi. えー、誠に少しばかりだったんですけれども、えー、能面の装束を、えー、このオンラインならではですごく近くに寄って皆様にお見せすることができるということもありましたので、今回少しそういったものを、えー、ご覧いただきました、えー。ありがとうございました。It was a very short presentation, but I hope you were able to see, thanks to this online format, the various objects I showed you really quite, quite close up. Thank you for looking at them. I think we are ready to、uh, begin our questions and answers, and、uh, you can put them in there, Steve.、Uh, yes. Please feel free to go to the QA function in the Zoom connection to write any questions for Takeda san that you'd like to share with us. We have uh, uh, 11 questions already.、Uh, I don't know that we can、uh, pick on every one, but let's try.、Uh, Let's see. When you dance a male or female character on stage, what do you pay attention to most in order to appear male or female? And how about old and young, living and non living? That is,、uh, uh, living human beings or spirits or ghosts? 老若男女それぞれの役、あるいは神様、あるいは幽霊、幽霊、それぞれのあアイデンティティを表すために、それぞれのポイントが、あそれを舞うときにはあるんですかあなるほど。えっ、ー、とですね、一番、えー、重要なのは構えっていうんですけれども、えー、舞台にただ立ったときに、どういう立ち方をするかということで、えー、実は役のパーソナリティが変わります。えー、ちょっとだけ舞台に上がってみたいと思います。かまえ、it stands。just by standing on the stage。you all just by standing。you already expressing the role、はい。女性の役ですと。スリムに立ちますけれども。男性の役になると、ずっと踏ん張ったりとかっていうような。そういうことで、えー、まあ、役のパーソナリティを、えー、表す表現をしたりもいたします。that was the first the female role。And then with the legs spread a little bit, the arms spread a little bit more, the male will. 
あと、まあ、声の出し方ですね。歌いという、まあ、これは非常に大事なんですけれども、声の出し方でも、えー、少し、えー、役を変えてみたりします。これもちょっと実演した方がいいかな。どうでしょうか。はい。You can also just by producing the voice. はい、お願いします。You, you just, はい、the voice is different. はい。例えば、女性の役ですと、This is the female role. こにもすべきことのソロ、えー、これは、えー、ちょっとお話ししたいことがありますっていう意味の言葉なんですけれども女性で,で今度はこれをもしおじいさんが言ったとしたら「The line was just saying, gee, I have something to say to you, and now we're going to try it with an old man」声。これは女性の役だな、おじいさんの役だな、おばあさんの役だな、鬼の役だなとかっていうふうに分かるようになります。The rest of the work is done by the mask and the wig and the costumes and other things. ありがとうございます。This is a question about the, the space, the stage behind you where you're performing.、Uh, where, what is the location of this? And is it a practice stage or a small stage for Private performances? Do you have audiences there? Also,、uh, could you tell us about how you practice before performances? Tada ima no butai wa benshu no yo butai desu ka? Toka do no no hito ga hunto ni no o mi ni iku tokoro desu ka? Toka s h i k u shiritai k a t a b e t e Sore kara. Kono butai desu ne. Kono stage. Kono stage wa moto moto wa keiko yo ni watashi no sofu ga tsukuta butai desu. This is a stage that was originally constructed by my grandfather for practice purposes. But as you can see, it's a really nice stage, and we do have a small space here, so occasionally we can have small audiences attend. 東京にお越しの際はぜひ遊びに出してください。If you come to Tokyo, please look me up. Shitsmon no Kohan des Kerinomo, so Enno no Mai no Butai no Mai no Keiko, Tokubetsuna, Kunen Toka, Jimbi, one. I don't know, Shoka. Hi. Eto desne, so to Minasama ni a Shinjirana nai kamo shire nai des kedomo, no no bai wa, rehearsal te mono o okonate mo ikkai dake, kihon te mino. De rehearsal nash de Butai ni tats koto mo taksa ari mas. You might not believe this, but、um, if there is a no rehearsal, a rehearsal for no play, there's only one rehearsal. And in fact, it's quite common for, to have a play, put on a play with zero rehearsals. But it's not that everyone is not going to be able to do it. It's not that everyone is going to be able to do it. It's not that everyone is going to be able to do it. And it's not the case that nobody's practicing. Everybody is practicing. They're just doing it separately, individually. The Buddha in Tata Tokini, and Nando Keiko Suruto, ma, harmony of Kiri in Arisigi de Shmao, the Ne. De, so you just are Mari Yosto Stina, the Buddha de, Skosko Butskaria Uona, Nante de Sone, Skosko Kinchokan, Doctor Kinchokan, Thomas Tamini, I did rehearsal on Mari Tatsan Okona, like to know a no Tokso on this. And one of the special characteristics of No is that、uh, if you actually did have people rehearse together, they might harmonize too much and it might not be that interesting to watch. And so if you get them together for the first or just the second time at the main event, they kind of crash into each other. And there's a certain sense of tension that maintains the interest of the audience during the actual performance. まあ、この例えば何とかっていう演目ですと、1時間ぐらいで大体終わるっていうふうに決まっていても、えー、演者の組み合わせですとか、その時の状況によって、それが55分になったり、65分になったりするというのが、脳という芸能の特色です。And another thing is the variation in performance time. So you might have a piece that normally takes 
60 minutes to perform, but just by the combination of performers were there on that day, they might do it in 55 minutes or 65 minutes. One, one uh, of our uh, friends and members looked very carefully and he thought he saw a woman playing the fue, the flute. Is he right? If so, has no change from the man-only tradition? Do women participate now? あの、えっとですね、え、第二次世界大戦の後から、え、プロの女性の能楽師というものが誕生して、え、今では全体の2割ぐらいは女性の能楽師の人がプロとして舞台になっています。it is certainly the case that the flute player uh, is a woman. Uh, since the Second World War, uh, women have uh, more and more joined the ranks of professional no actors, and about 20% of the professionals are now female. And they aren't just musicians, but they also uh, take the stage as uh, main actors, shite actors, just like myself. There are several questions about the actual material construction uh, and, and, and uh, makeup of the mask, the main. Um, uh, what is a mask made of and what does it look like on the inside? And, and uh, how... How does it feel to be wearing the mask and trying to see outside? あの、ノーメンの材料何でできてるか。それからリメンが見たいんです。それからつける心地についてはい。え、ノーメンの材料はヒノキという材料の木になります。ノー、ノーマスクスアメイドアウトオブ <笑> <あの>、<笑> no, no of, of, of tree called Hinoki, Japanese cypress. 裏側はあんまり見せないんですけど、今日は特別です。We <笑> normally don't show the back side, but this is special, so here it is. え、こんな感じになっています。で、あの、脳面を顔につけるにあたってなんですけれども、この裏側のところに少しちっちゃなクッションを入れます。When we put the mask on, we have to take tiny cushions and we put them between our the 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 mask and the face. というのはですね、脳面は実は角度というのが非常に大事なので、これ今は多分すごく綺麗に見えてる角度だと思うんですけれども、この脳面がガクッと上向いちゃったり、ガクッと下向くと、この脳面が死んでしまうんですね。The reason for that is that the angles are extremely important. So if the mask slips and is presented at the wrong angle, it's going to look awful. なので、各個人の、ま、顔の角度に合うように and so we put small cushions on because the people have different faces and it, it allows you to adjust the mask to the face. I haven't thought too much about what it feels to wear a mask, but I can say that your field of vision is severely limited. 目の前の本当にちっちゃな空間が見えるだけで足元等は一切見えません。You can just see in front of you a little bit. You can't see your feet at all. ありがとうございます。I'm going to jump uh, back to the very first question that was asked. Uh, are string instruments ever used in the orchestra? 例えばの、shamisen no, or koto, biwa, あやしで管楽器を使うことはありますかはい、あのですね、実はこれ能の楽器っていうのは非常に実は重要な要素で、あの、4つの役をこのお囃子の役を見ていくと、太鼓、大鼓、筒、笛の4つなんですけども、笛
Only the flute is a melody. The other three are percussion instruments. で、これはなぜかというと、メロディーを一番奏でたいのは、え楽器ではなくて歌いによる声でそのメロディーを作り上げたいんです。The reason is that we produce the melody through singing and not so much through the instruments. なので、メロディーラインが出る弦楽器はどうしても脳の舞台に合わないので、基本的には使用されることがありません。なのでまた、笛は一応メロディーの出る楽器なんですけれども、脳の笛において大事なのは、メロディーの美しさもそうなんですけれども、息の強さ、息によってこう打楽器的に音を作り上げていくっていうところも大事なので、えー、笛も広い意味で言うと、脳では打楽器の扱いになります。And then it's interesting to note that the flute does produce a melody and it's very lovely, but it's in a certain sense not there for the melody. The strength of the performer's breath is also important.、Uh, how forcefully they blow it. And in a certain sense, they're taking a wind instrument and using it almost as if it were a percussion instrument.、Mm-hmm. ありがとうございます。Uh, do no actors Ever improvise their movements? I know, but I know to you, the Yakshaga, so Kyo Tekini, Katao Kaitari, Toka, Jibun Nani, Kosurebai, Toka, Serifo Kaitari, so so improvise the Kotoa, Arundiska. Hi, Kion Tekini, Adoribu, no, Isai, and Kosin, no, Adoribu, no, is a Yusarit, no, Sen. In principle, there is absolutely no ad libbing at all permitted. ただ、いくつか特別なアドリブの演出がありまして、それはある程度自由にやっていくことになっています。With a very few slight exceptions where a d i b is permitted. で、例えばその主役の,、えー、この演者が舞台上である動きをしたら、次はこういう動きになるっていうのが、全部みんながそれを見て把握して、そっちに寄っていくみたいな、そういうことを舞台上で急遽行ったりすることも。Just for example, the Taijo de Shiaku no Hitoga, Ara Tokubetsna Gokio Sulto, Sokokara, Insga Iki Ni Kawar, Marino, Ohayashi Destoka, Jutai no Totasha Solo Mite, Ah, Kyo Kotsno Insi de Arundara, Tiuni Ko Kanzi Dotta Ste, Engio Kaiti. So, there's occasionally where the performer has a choice、uh, on how to move and will make that choice in the performance, and then the other performers will react and say, okay, that's the way we're going today.、Mm-hmm. Okay. And how much control does the shite have in choosing the costume for a particular performance? And is there some kind of a library that you look at to check out the costumes and props? That are you,、uh, appropriate for a certain play and performance? I know, 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 えー、と装束の選定、その主役をたどればするときに、私が主役をするときに、どの装束を使うかっていうのは、今は私がある程度選ぶことができます。As for uh, uh, the costumes,、uh, at this point, I have a certain amount of、uh, discretion in what I can choose. でも私が若い頃は、自分で選ぶことはできなくて、私の師匠である、えー、カンゼ流のマスター、家元。あるいは私の父に聞いて、えー、こういうものを使いなさいっていうふうに言われることが多かったと思います。But I was younger, I didn't have that discretion.、Uh, the, when I performed a role, the costumes were chosen either by the head of the Kanze school or by my father. They told me what to wear. で、脳装束はどこにあるかっていうとですね、えー、例えばですが、えー、私の武田の家にも、えー、かなりの数。そうですね、200ぐらいの数の脳装束があります。And as for where we get the costumes, well, my family, we, we own about 200 costumes. 
。で、そこ以外にも今申し上げた関税の家元のところにはもっとずっとたくさん、多分500とかもっとそれ以上ぐらいの脳装束があるので、そういう中から選ばせていただいて、私の場合でしたら使うことが多いです。And then in the main house of the Kansai school is a much larger number, something like 500, and I'm able to、uh, make use of those as well. I didn't know that. Yes.、Um, what, uh, what efforts are you making to train the next generation of no performers? Is no popular among younger people, like teenagers? <laughs> 若い世代には、脳には人気があるんですかそれから次世代を作るためには、どんな仕事をされているのですかあなるほどあの。若いお客様をこう引き寄せるっていうことは、あの私たち脳学科にとってはとても大きな課題です。It's an extremely important task for us to attract a younger audience. あの、少し、もうちょっと今からそうですね、30年前ぐらいだと、若い人は、ほとんど脳の舞台見てなかったと思います。About 30 years ago, you would never see young people at a no theater. でも、最近は、えー、日本でもその価値観がこう多様化して、まあ、みんながあの同じものを好きになるのではなくて、それぞれがみんな好きなものが違うような状態になったので、若い人でも、えー、少しずつですが、脳をご覧いただく方が増えたと思います。But Japan is changing and people are becoming more diverse in their tastes and their hobbies. And we're seeing more and more younger people at the theaters as they pursue what they're really interested in. The pro no wakai to go yo se sur, ma, and so that it could take you to the Kansi Mastewa, the Hari, eh, Kibishi Bakari, or not, the Sinces, Sidoste, Kutikoto, ma, Hitosto. それと、えー、舞台に立つ機会をできるだけたくさん作ってあげることで、えー、やはりあの経験を積んで、えー、徐々にこちらを好きになってもらうということをしていかなければと思います。で、2つの仕事をしていかなければと思います。First of all, we've got to be nice to them and not be so hard on them and not be so tough on them as it used to be. And second of all, we've got to give them plenty of chances to stand on the stage and be exposed to being on the stage. あとはその、えー以前私がシアトルに伺った時にもそういうことをしたんですけれども、えー、お客様、小っちゃなお客様、えー、小学生とか中学生とかの小さなお客様に、えー、のを知っていただくために、体験型のワークショップだとかを行って、えー、小さい頃からちょっとそういう芸能に触れるっていう機会を、えー、多く作る。これは国を挙げて日本でも行われています。And then finally, as you saw when I appeared in Seattle, I did various workshops for young children, elementary school students. And we need to expose、uh, children at an early age to know and let them see it and let them try it out so that they'll、uh, be exposed to it and, and like it when they become older. Steve, I think we're going to、uh, wrap it up around now. Yeah, our, our time for QA is, is, is over. I lost track of the time. I'm sorry. Thank you so much to all of you for joining、uh, our program this evening. We hope you enjoyed this program tonight. Thanks to Paul Atkins for serving as our bilingual interpreter, and especially to Takeda Munenori san for his intimate performances of No. Please join us for Washinkai's next event, What is Haiku? A talk by Professor Atkins to be presented by Washinkai. In the spring of 2022. The talk will be followed by a roundtable discussion of haiku,、uh, which has become one of the world's most popular forms of writing poetry. Again, for more information and how you can help Washinkai to support classical Japanese studies, please go to www.washinkai.info. We welcome and greatly appreciate your support. We end tonight's program with a bonus feature a video of an outdoor performance of No at the Hibiya Festival. You're welcome to stay tuned to watch it for six or seven minutes. You will see and hear excerpts from Takasago, Hagoromo, and Shakyo performed by Takeda Munenori in unusual settings for No and in close ups. Of the intimately expressive faces, the masks, 
uh, you will see that Shakyo features a lion dance that customarily concludes a program of no plays such as we have shared tonight. Enough said. Thank you and have a pleasant evening.